Yes. Oh, the civility of things. Hello. I'm the one, the only, I'm the most esteemed. Dr. Tom, and I'm here to impart upon you my wisdom of professional wrestling. Because this weekend, the disgusting hobo, hobo Tom has to go off and cater to the lowest possible denomination of sports fans the NASCAR crowd. Ugh. Oh, their vileness, their drunkenness, their sheer improperty. It's horrid. Why anyone just watch cars go around in a circle? It's well beyond me. But nonetheless, there's actually a full weekend of wrestling, of which only one Dr. Tom, only one Hobo Tom shall actually partake in. But nonetheless, I'm here to impart my wisdom upon you, the wanting masses who wish to educate themselves more fully. So we shall start off, oh, yes, to one Miss Dahlia Porter. Thank you very much. You, Miss, receive this six count in appreciation. Enjoy life. Just for you, kind sir. There's going to be a couple different wrestling shows, which is probably much more class and civility than this hobo can offer. If you watch Going and Raw from Steve here and Larson, again, someone the hobo tried to copy in order to produce all this content. And there's also the whole effing show by Kevin Scampoli. 
again, very learned man of the professional wrestlers. And of course, I was always cultaholic. And also, I'd be remiss to mention what culture professional wrestling. For Simon Miller, you sir definitely get an up. So with all that being said, let's get to the predictions. But that's what you, the wrestling masses, want. You want knowledge that you may intelligently discuss the finer aspects of professional wrestling with your peers. Let us start off then with the NWA. So in this match, I want to say it's NWA something there. The name escapes me for the hobo in these sc chicken scratch notes. Not provide me any further information except for the matches. Let us start off. Hmm. We have, of course, the television title tournament. So in the first round, we have Tim Storm taking on Kenny Anderson. Kenneth Anderson shall be victorious. Also in the first round, Matt Cross is going against someone. Matt Cross shall be victorious. Again, he was in Lucha Underground as the Son of Havoc shall reign supreme. Then we have Zicky Dice. This is some unknown quantity Zicky Dice, that person of the 80s and 90s who came from the gutters of Miami. He will win. Then we have the question mark versus one very portly Trevor Murdoch. Hmm. Southern Texas bar brawler versus a master of Mongrovian karate. I shall choose the question mark. And that then sets up for Kenneth Anderson versus Matthew Cross. Matthew Cross, fan favorite. Kenneth Anderson will somehow get himself disqualified by nefarious means. And therefore, Matthew Cross shall go on to the finals. Along with Zicky Dice. First is the question mark. Again, Mongrovian Karate shall prevail, leaving us in the finals for the television championship. One of the earliest championships I actually do remember from, from my more youthful days. We have Matt Cross taking on the question mark. However, the Mongrovian Karate will not be enough to overcome the athleticism of Matthew Cross. Matthew Cross becomes your first and inaugural NWA television champion. However, these matches are very short, though. I'll watch a little bit of it as I recline and take a little nap. Then we have our next match, a tag team triple threat match. It means for those of you simpletons out there, triple means three. We have the Rock and Roll Express taking on a revised beer money. Hmm, indeed. Of James Storm and Eli Drake taking on the wild cards. In this match, Ricky Morton and Gibson shall retain their NWA tag team titles. Lead to discord, however. For something odd shall happen. They shall win. But this shall lead to a feud with James Storm and Eli Drake and the wildcards for future matches. 
the Rock and Roll Express will be victorious. Then we have Aaron Stevens, a third degree black belt in Mongrovian Karate, taking on the genetic freak himself, Big Papa Pump, who has your hook up. Holler if you hear him, Scott Steinert, a man from Michigan, again, the most glorious state. Scott Steiner shall prevail and become the NWA national champion, as he so rightfully deserves. And then, probably in the match of the night. You have Allison K defending her NWA Women's Championship, which is a belt that constructed by a hobo for it looks horrible. Even worse so than the little mini strap adorned by Riho from AEW. It looks like a belt a nephew or niece could create out of some cheap fabric, metal, and family pictures. She defends her belt versus La Mera Mera, Thunder Rosa. Again, Thunder Rosa will become the new NWA Women's Champion. And then, finally, we have Flip Gordon. Nick Aldis, in what I would term as my stone cold lock of the night, Nick Aldis retains the 10 pounds of gold, the NWA Heavyweight Championship, one of the most prestigious belts, next to the big gold belt and the winged eagle belt. And that is the NWA pay-per-view again this Friday, I think. It's going against SmackDown. Does not matter that Filvia Hobo has to go go earn his lackey's wage. But let us take a little break. And on this return, we have a more proper and suitable pay-per-view event, When Worlds Collide. Production by NXT, or featured by NXT, and oddly enough, NXT UK. Indeed. So, in the first match, we have Mia Yim taking on Kaylee Ray for the Women's UK Championship. Kaylee Ray retains her title. Ugh, not necessarily going to be a. An, it shall be a good match, but in comparison, it will be okay. It will be a nice wrestling match to take a little. Nap through. Then we have Finn Balor taking on Ilaj Dragonoff. Yes, I apologize for that. So rudely interrupted. That's okay. As a voting American citizen, it is important for me to air my opinion, especially my most learned opinion. So I believe I was talking about Finn Balor taking on Elaj Dra Dragunov. 
Yes, for Finn Balor, the demon shall rise up. And this is my stone cold lock. That Finn Balor, Finn Balor shall be victorious. Then we have an unprecedented match. Probably the match of the night. We have one of my preferred tag teams have reunited. We have DIY. Remember, do it yourself because no one's going to do it for you. Taking on Mustache Mountain, a man whose facial hair is as manly. And their, their manliness exudes from them. It's very tough. But I must go with my first feeling. DIY returns to prominence in NXT. And then for the Cruiserweight title. Surprisingly, this was not Match of the Night. Although this should be fairly entertaining. You have the champion, Angel Garza. Taking on Isaiah Swerve Scott, taking on Jordan Devlin, taking on Travis Banks. The Kiwi Buzzsaw himself is in a match. Angel Garza shall retain his cruiserweight belt. And in an eight man tag extravaganza, you have Imperium, led by Walter, taking on the Undisputed. Era Imperium shall be victorious, for we have seen the chinks in the armor of the undisputed era. Slowly, the dominance in NXT will disappear. And then we have Rhea Ripley taking on Tony Storm in the NXT Women's Championship. Rhea Ripley. Yes, shall once sell be again or continue to hold the NXT Women's Championship. So now, without any further interruptions, let us take our final break. And then, yes, you hear the music to send them. Yes, it's time to talk. About the Royal Rumble, one of the major events held by WWE ye each year. This is an event that that Hobo, because he has done things by nefarious means, is still on his copyright strike, and he will not be able to give a live stream reaction experience. But we'll give a post match reaction and recap to the events of this evening. So probably in the first match of the night, this shall be nothing to speak of in, of in of itself. We have Shorty G versus Sheamus. And because I shall be taking a little nap, Seamus shall be victorious. Shorty G will be Shorty G. Then we have probably in the match of the night. We have in this corner El Hilo, the one time leader of Los Ingobernales de Japan, Andrade Cien Almas. And his opponent of equal stature. We have Umberto Carrillo. They're not going to hot potato this belt. But instead, Andrade shall retain his U.S. championship. Then we have Lacey Evans taking on the champion Bailey. 
This is one of the very few titles that will change hands over this entire week or entire weekend. Well, weekend and then beginning of the week for Sunday starts the new week. But we, ha I shall say, Lacey Evans shall become the NXT Women's Champion. And also, we have Becky Lynch. Rebecca Lynch taking on from the land of the rising sun, Asuka. This is interesting. I have a feeling Asuka shall be Asuka two belts. For she shall in one hand hold the woman tag team title. While on the other hand, having the Raw Women's Championship belt. But I don't think they're going to keep the belt on Asuka and Io Shirai much longer. Or not Io Shirai. Kairi Sane. I apologize and stand corrected. And then probably in the main event of the evening, we have Daniel Bryan, the champion of the people, taking on the universal champion, the fiend, the most vile, Bray Wyatt. This is a very simple stone cold lock. The Fiend, through villainy, treachery, and his pure vileness, detains his WWE Universal Championship. And then for the two showcase matches, we have in the Women's Royal Rumble, Shayna Baszler will be crowned the Royal Rumble winner and get to face either. Lacey Evans or Asuka for WrestleMania. And then in the Men's Royal Rumble, in a new record holding Iron Man, a true champion, Brock Lesnar, who enters first in the Royal Rumble, goes through 29 other competitors. And retains his WWE Championship and solidifies his mark in the WWE. Again, I would like to thank all of you wonderful viewers on YouTube for my, and please receive my eternal gratitude for watching this programming. Again, please have a good night and enjoy this entire weekend of grappling festivities. Farewell, adieu, and have a good night.